Can two male dogs get along without fighting? Welcome to the cat and dog house, where we help cat and dog parents better understand their pets. I'm Susan Nilsson and I'm an accredited cat and dog behavior professional. In this video, I'm going to be talking about whether two male dogs can get along without fighting, exploring some of the common triggers for aggression, and highlighting nine factors influencing male dog relationships. For those of us who choose to share our lives with more than one dog, the question of whether two male dogs can get along is a common concern. Based on my experience living with three pairs of male dogs, the short answer is yes, two male dogs can coexist peacefully in the same household. But there are some important considerations to keep in mind. Let's start by addressing the common belief that a male dog tends to get along better with a female dog and vice versa. Many households have same-sex dogs getting along perfectly well without any issues, including mine. Here are Louie and Bertie, as an example. But like most things dog-related, how well dogs get along depends largely on the dog's temperaments, their home environment, and their early learning experiences. In fact, statistically, female dogs are more likely to display aggression toward other dogs in their household. A study of 38 pairs of dogs where one dog behaved aggressively toward another in the same home found that 79% of cases involved same-sex pairs. Female dogs were more frequently involved in fights compared to males, 68%. The primary instigator of aggression was often the most recently introduced or new dog toward the current dog, 70%. And younger dogs initiated fights in 74% of cases. So it's not necessarily a done deal that male dogs will be more aggressive toward each other, or that female dogs will always get along better. If one of your dogs is behaving aggressively toward another, the first step is to try to find out why it's happening. For example, aggression may occur around important resources like food, toys, or access to people or spaces. It may be set off by emotional arousal, like visitors at the door or seeing another dog on a walk. Or it could be fear-based if one dog is uncomfortable with a certain interaction. Here are four common triggers for inter-dog aggression based on the 38 dog study I mentioned earlier. Number one. Attention from the dog's owner, occurred in 46% of the dog pairs studied. Number 2. Conflicts over food, also 46%. Number 3. General excitement, 31%. Number 4. Found items or toys, 26%. Other lesser triggers included changes in the home environment, one dog becoming weaker or injured, and loud or sudden noises. Passing through doorways or sharing walkways can also be an issue, as can access to dog beds, furniture, or crates. Other situations where aggression between dogs may occur is being confined in tight spaces, being in busy crowded places, and having visitors to the home. Once you know what triggers your dog's aggressive behavior, you can take steps to manage them around those triggers to prevent conflicts in those specific situations. You can do this through positive reinforcement training, structured interaction, and environmental management. Be aware, however, that the triggers may be different for each dog. Research into free-ranging dogs shows us that dogs often try to avoid conflict, no matter if they're male or female. When dogs are free to act naturally without humans getting involved, they tend to use subtle signals through their body language and vocalizations to solve problems peacefully. This tells us that dogs generally prefer getting along rather than fighting, regardless of whether they are male or female. This is something our pet dogs might miss out on because they have a more confined lifestyle, which comes with its own set of stressor. Now let's look at nine factors that can influence relationships between male dogs. Number one, it's commonly thought that intact male dogs may be more prone to aggressive behaviors because of their hormones. A study of 386 dogs discovered that neutering decreased the chance of male dogs being aggressive toward each other. Aggressive incidents between the dogs in the study dropped from 20.98% to 13.99% after neutering. But there are a couple of caveats to this. Another study found that neutering puppies at a young age reduces the production of reproductive hormones, which might lead to an increase in aggressive behavior. Early neutering may lead to more anxiety, making dogs more fearful of strangers, other dogs, and loud noises. Because fear often triggers aggression in dogs, it's important to carefully consider and discuss with a vet the decision to neuter, 
especially when done at a young age or before they reach sexual maturity. Also, if a dog learns to behave aggressively in a specific situation toward another dog, and if this behavior is reinforced, meaning the dog gets what he wants, it can become a learned behavior. In such cases, neutering may not have a significant impact on reducing the aggressive behavior. Number 2. Age can be another big influence on the relationship between two dogs. An older dog who wants to rest may find a bouncy puppy overwhelming and irritating, and respond aggressively if the puppy bothers him. Dogs of similar age can make good playmates because they are likely to have similar energy levels, but there may also a competitive element to their relationship. A much younger dog may display more energy and assertiveness, which can lead to conflicts with other male dogs if not properly managed. Number 3. A dog's level of social maturity can also impact how he interacts with other males. As puppies mature, hormonal shifts can lead to increased assertiveness and boundary testing, which can potentially cause conflicts with other male dogs. Socially mature dogs may handle encounters with less conflict and more understanding of social cues. The behavior of adolescent dogs is a bit like that of human teenagers, pushing the limits as they learn to navigate their social environment. Number 4. Dogs that are well socialized from a young age tend to be more comfortable around other dogs. Early positive experiences with other dogs teach appropriate social behaviors and how to communicate effectively with canine peers. As a result, these dogs are often more relaxed and confident around other dogs, reducing the likelihood of aggressive responses stemming from fear or uncertainty. Number 5. Competition over highly valued resources such as food, toys, or attention from the dog's owners can also lead to conflict. While resource guarding is a common, and normal, dog behavior, it can become a problem if it escalates to aggression towards another dog. Number 6. In some cases, male dogs who are close in size may be better suited as housemates, simply because their similar size can lower the risk of accidental injuries during rough housing. However, it's not uncommon for larger dogs to instinctively self-handicap during play. This way, they moderate their physical advantage to create an even playing field, thus allowing smaller dogs to participate safely and confidently in the game. Number 7. A lot of the time, how two male dogs relate to one another comes down to individual personalities. Some dogs are socially confident and get along with others easily, while less experienced dogs or those of a more nervous disposition, may try to assert themselves, leading to tension. Number 8. A dog in pain or discomfort may be more irritable and prone to aggression, affecting his relationships with other dogs in the home. He may become more defensive and less tolerant of interactions with other dogs because his main aim will be to protect himself and avoid further pain. Number 9. Lastly, how an owner manages and reacts to their dog's behavior can influence aggressive tendencies. For instance, if an owner scolds their dog for growling at another dog, the dog might learn that expressing discomfort is punished. This could potentially lead to a negative association with the other dog and continued, or even greater, aggression toward him. But if the owner calmly distracts the growling dog and reassures him, it can lead to a positive outcome without resorting to aggression. This helps build a more positive association with the second dog, and keeps the first dog's emotional arousal levels in check because he knows his warning signals will be acknowledged. To get more insider insights into your dog's behavior, don't miss my video on how to tell which of your dogs is the alpha, link above and below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos on dog behavior. Thanks for watching. Come see us at catanddoghouse.com/dogs.